to have another conversation about TXV. We have about um, six TXV videos. They're our most popular HVAC videos. And a few like TXV specific podcasts. We've got some 3D stuff. We got Brian holding a TXV in his hand, talking for 35 minutes. <laughs> I would say that uh, better than me rehashing the whole TXV thing again, that you guys should uh, revisit some of those things while you're working, put it in your ear. And um, usually what happens as you grow, there's another layer that last time didn't sink in. Um, but as your technical skills and experience grow, you listen and you, you unlock another layer uh, that gives confidence and helps you like in that next situation for TXVs. TXV diagnosis is super simple. So I'm just gonna outline it for you, all right? Okay. It's really easy, no one, ever, no one ever gets it wrong in the industry. What does this tell us about our TXV failure? If that's high, there's a possibility that it's real. Okay. All right. If we have a normal or high, then you're allowed to look at your uh, your TXC as a possibility. If you don't have normal or high, the TXC is off limits. Does that make sense? All right. Great. Now we're going to go <laughs> super heat. Um, or and you're talking specifically about the open. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even, yeah. yeah. We'll talk, I'll end just as a bonus. I'll end on the open TXV situation. But forget that TXVs can Fail. overfeed <laughs> open. It's all about TXVs closing down. Super heat. Hi. Hi. Normal <laughs> or low. Let's do normal under 25. If your superheat is normal or low, your TXV is doing its job. Mm -hmm. Something else is going on. Under 25, let's not be quoting the slightly low shot TXVs. All right? Mm -hmm. If a TXV, let's say a TXV is slightly shut, so we have a higher than expected superheat, and we're pretty much doing our job, it's just a little bit like low on our suction. Um, how can we prove that that's the only problem? I check my split just to make sure that's not way off. If okay. it's way off, then I'm right off. Okay. Split is huge. If you're split, you got a nice 20 degree split, you're not allowed to quote TXC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Anything higher than 20 degrees, definitely not allowed to quote the TXC. All right, so we'll, we'll put that on here too. Normal or high. Um, so we'll do the uh, TXV in here. Superheat, normal, under 25, low, not the TXV. Split normal or high, not the TXV. So that should eliminate half of the um, misquoted TXVs that we had. Subcool, low TXV. There you go. Now, let's say that your TXV <coughs> is failing and it's not opening all the way, and you have like um, 25 degree superheat, and you have a slightly lower suction than you like. Um, and you're convinced, okay, this TXV, like we should put something in here that's gonna meter and give us nine degrees superheat, right? What's a way you could prove that the TXV is actually stuck, it can open, versus something else going on, like an airflow issue or a charge issue? There's a heat pump running a heat where you can take out the sensor ball, put it in ice, warm up with your hand, if you have ice. Yeah. So if you run it in heat, you're not going to be able to tell something that precise because it's just slightly close. So heat mode might work totally fine and it wouldn't prove to you if it was just slightly close. It might break it free and then it would start to work, so that's always a good test. But what he said about taking the bulb out and putting it in your hand is the way. 
If you have this going on, it's just slightly closed, take the bulb out, put it in your hand. And you should notice a dramatic difference. If the TSV is working, it's gonna open a little more, but more importantly, the superheat's gonna come down to very low. Then you know, okay, it's not actually stuck. My TXV is fine, it can do its job, it's not internally jammed. If you have the same numbers, then you know it's stuck. It's trying to open, but it's hitting something and it's stuck. So there's a test to, to see if your TXV is actually doing its job. Um, there could be other things going on, like a screen before the TXV clogged, um, which you don't have a way of diagnosing that. Um, or something inside of it like goobers actually getting caught and it can open to a certain point and then it's getting stuck. So it could happen, but you should be able to prove that um, by grabbing that, that bolt. As a bonus, we're gonna do a TXV open uh, scenario. I'm gonna start with this though. These are our pressures. Uh, Subcool, we're gonna do six. And superheat, we're gonna do 18. Not a TXV. All right. Austin says we don't have an overfeeding TXV. We'll never have a superheat on a wide open TXV. That's right. Exactly right. You're never gonna have a, a superheat on a wide open TXV. So what else could be causing this? Compressor yeah, slipping. That's the most likely cause of a really high suction and a low head with a subcool and a superheat. You're very likely it's your compressor that's slipping. Yeah. Rear bursting valve could be the problem too. Yeah. Um, and <coughs> yeah, so this this gets very tricky. Get a lot of tech support from different angles um, to diagnose that. Now. You pull up, and what's, what issue is this going to cause for our system performance? Warm coil. A warm coil? Less yeah. of a split. Less of a split, low split, yep. High humidity. High humidity in the house, warm coil, low split, not keeping up on hot days. The coil's not getting cold enough to pull up moisture. We're going to do what an open TXV actually looks like. 1.5 sub, zero super. Now this might be between zero and five something unusually low, uh, depending upon where you're measuring it and how, how close your meter calibration is to your temperature climb. I've, I've seen something where the system was overcharged and someone adjusted the TXV. To compensate? To compensate. And then I had to remove the refrigerant and then redial. Redial the TXV back in. That would totally make sense. Yeah. So we have a low subcool. And that's uh, what's causing the low sub subcool. It's overfeeding the TXV. Because it's overfeeding, yeah. So why does that affect the subcool? Restriction at the TXV is straight with the coil. Mm -hmm. Refrigerant can't stack the doors wide open. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Okay. It's it's what he it's what he's describing, but that's a, a clear way. Putting yeah. When the TXV closes down more, the refrigerant backs up against it. <laughs> And that's where we get our higher pressure and higher subcool. Where if the TXV is open all the way, the refrigerant is just whizzing by, and you don't have as much subcool. That's beautiful. Thanks, Austin. Um, in the superheat area, the difference between this and our compressor was um, well, a couple different things. One, superheat is really low, and a TXV that's overfeeding is always going to have a low superheat. So let's just always acknowledge that. That's always going to be the case. Next, you're not going to have as crazy high of a head or a suction as you do with a slipping compressor. The, the, the head um, is a little bit higher than a slipping compressor. The suction is a little bit nor more normal. So both are a little bit more normal with a TXV failure, whereas a slipping compressor, it's more extreme. We usually are up above the 160 range um, in the 70s sometimes, 170 on suction pressure with a slipping compressor. But your TXV is not gonna be giving you, a wide open TXV is not gonna be giving you 170 PSI on your suction. It's just, that's, it's not gonna allow it that extreme. It can only open all the way up to a certain point. The other thing is, is that if you go to add refrigerant, um, Let's say we're in the five range, you go to add refrigerant, you're gonna make it zero pretty quick. 
and it's not going to do a lot for your your sub cool. It's still just going to rush by. Um, so that could let you know right away that something's going on. Whereas with the compressor issue slipping, it doesn't change very much with added refrigerant. Uh, eventually it does, um, but you know, suction just keeps getting higher and higher and the compressor sounds worse and worse. Um, so you'd have to dump a lot more in that scenario. Um, TXV, if we have, let's say a five degree superheat and everything else looks like a failed TXV, we could have a failed TXV with a slightly low system. Um, and that could be a little bit more tricky to diagnose. Uh, if you add refrigerant and your um, TXV is closed down, your subcool responds immediately. As soon as you start adding refrigerant and you have a closed down TXV, that subcool is like boop, 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 boop. You're stacking against the closed door. I'm gonna use that for the rest of my life. <laughs> Uh, I was just going to challenge you guys with one more question here. <laughs> These are our pressures, so just erase that. High superheat, low suction, high subcool. If you send me a screenshot of just this, what does it equal? Restriction. Restriction, yep. Failing TXV, we're talking about TXV, so okay. this this equals a failing TXV. And I'm gonna wanna know what this is when you send me a screenshot about failing TXV. What does this mean? It's really cold in the house. Could be really cold. No, probably not cold in the house. It means it's off limits to quote your TXV. High or normal split? absolutely off limits. Your, all your readings told you the TXV was failed, but it's not failed. Your TXV is just closing because it's doing its job. The coil is really cold, creating a high temperature split, and the TXV is closing in response to a cold coil. So your pressures tell you failed TXV. But when in fact, we just don't have enough heat on our coil. And the heat comes from airflow. So that's what you just reminded me. In the screenshot of the readings, let's also get things like split. <laughs> Super helpful. Uh, not just the, the total number of the split, which is good, but it'd be nice to also have no return temperature, apply temperature in that. But yeah, not a failed TXV. That's an airflow issue. You can get monometers if you don't have but it will close the TXV. It will slam that TXV shut on airflow issue. That's why it's so confusing. Thanks for watching. If you're willing, give this video a thumbs up and drop us a comment. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated with all of our future videos. And as a quick reminder, HVAC School isn't just a YouTube channel. Dive deeper with us at our main website, HVACRschool.com. Curious for more knowledge on the go? We've got you covered. Tune into the HVAC School podcast available on all your favorite podcast apps. And while you're at it, join our thriving Facebook group. Also, don't miss out on our free mobile applications available for both iPhone and Android. We're all about community. Vortex by Tex.